What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a lot of maintenance items to take care of on the Land Cruiser. First, one of the CV axles has sprung a leak and the grease is coming out, so that guy will have to go. Second, I noticed there's a small oil leak in between the CV axle itself and the differential. So what most likely happened is the differential seal is finally worn out and needs to be replaced. And lastly, I'm gonna be changing out the differential fluid in the front diff. Since the CV axle and the diff seal have to come out, I might as well change the front differential fluid. It's just right there. So hang tight and let's get started. Okay, so underneath the car, you can see this one was leaking prior. There's some like uh, residue or whatever. But this one I already changed out um, not too long ago. I did that off camera. And there's actually a way you can change this seal, the axle seal, without taking the axle completely out from the hub. So um, I might do it on this side so just so you guys can see. But this one has, let me see here. The axle seal is leaking also. You can see it's all wet right here. See all this? It's nice and shiny. It's supposed to be dry like the top part right here. Like right here. But it's not because it's leaking from in between right here, that little uh, plastic seal. Um, and also on this guy, I believe right there, if you can see it, the axle itself, the boot, is uh, slightly torn and leaking. Let me see if I can see it better right. You can see it right there. All the grease is flinging out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the axle on this one as well first things first securely put the car on jack stands and then take off the wheel to remove the axle you'll need to take off this dust cap you do not need to take out the six bolts around it now like I said before I'm gonna try to show you how to remove the differential seal without physically taking the axle out of the hub where you just pull the diff side of the axle out. Now you gotta take off this little bracket that holds the brake line and the ABS sensor wire on. Then you gotta loosen the upper control arm from the knuckle itself. On this one it's an aftermarket so I have a bolt and a nut but if yours is factory it's just a nut, a lot of hammering and it should break loose. With this little bolt out you can move this pretty easily and then I've taken this bolt out now you can see here um, see where all the grease is um, the CV axle is uh, busted and this was a relatively new one I think it's because of the lift with uh, no diff drop they just end up breaking them so um, you know I should probably do that but what I'm gonna change is actually inside the inner axle so this is this guy it's a little uh, plastic steel this I would definitely recommend buying the Toyota one because you do not want to do this again the other one lasted 20 years 200,000 miles um, I'm sure this one will last the rest of the life of the vehicle so um, now comes the tricky part so like I said on the uh, aftermarket one I only had the bolt it came out already and it's a little sleeve that goes in here, but on the factory one, you probably have to hammer it a couple times to get the uh, knuckle away from the uh, upper control arm. But since I have it out, it should kind of just pry it out like this. Maybe. so that comes loose make sure when you're doing this this doesn't overextend and break your um, brake lines or anything like that um, you also want some type of container underneath because when you pop that axle out some fluid will come out so here is how to take out the axle without taking out the axle That's how you take it out. So once you take the axle out, be careful of this line right here, this brake line. You don't want to overstretch it. And as you can see, you can see the seal that's in there. 
Um, now all I gotta do technically is to get that seal out, move the rest of the axle out. Right there. And then there's the seal. Pry it out with a pry bar and you're good. But since I'm removing the whole uh, CV axle, cause it's, look at all this, it's just all messy right there. It's all blown up. Um, I'm gonna have to take off the uh, this end of the hub and uh, go from there. If you were only gonna do the seal, that's how you get to it without taking out the axle. Next thing we're gonna do to remove the axle from the hub itself is we're gonna take off this little dust cap. Now what I usually do is get a chisel, put it on the side, tap it with the hammer and it comes out. There we go. You can see right there, there's a snap ring that holds the axle in the hub uh, flange itself. So next step to do is remove this uh, snap ring. Once the snap ring comes out, uh, we should be able to push the axle inward and remove it. There it is. So to get the axle out, I just once the snap ring is out, you hit it a couple times with a hammer lightly. Um, be careful, don't like destroy the splines or anything like that, but it should go in and once it goes in That's when you can pull it out from the inside. So I'm gonna try to do that right now Oh, it's greasy as hell So I've done this on a Toyota Tercel and a Toyota Corolla before, and they were near, not nearly as heavy as this one, but this one is, uh, has a little bit of heft to it. Yes, that's why it's Land Cruiser. You can see where it's separated. There it is, right there, from the actual clamp itself. That's why it's all messed up. And this is the part that goes into the, uh, this is the part that goes into the hub, right? And this is, uh, the part that separated this piece right here is what we yanked out out of the diff so the seal itself this guy the diff is in here the seal itself sits right there right there so that's how it keeps all the uh, moisture out and the uh, gear oil in but um, on the one in the car obviously the inside lip has probably failed due to old age. So uh, that's why it's getting swapped out right now. So next we're gonna remove uh, this seal from inside the diff right there. Now notice how the uh, seal sits. It doesn't go like too deep in. It's the lip is barely on the edge uh, right here. You can see it's like a little sunken in compared to the rest of the diff, um, but it's not pushed too far in. It's probably like, I would say like three, maybe four millimeters into the diff. Um, so this guy will be three or four millimeters inwards um, When you put it back in so just make sure you take note and you know like how it how it's supposed to sit If you push it in too far, it won't seal properly. I've seen a lot of people use like some fancy pro uh, What is it called like a uh, slide hammer hooks all kinds of stuff? Um, pry bar for me works the best seems like so what you want to do is kind of put it right there and then Usually I use my foot and see if I can get it out. It's going to fling a little bit, but just be prepared. Ta-da! So now that it's out, you can see like, um, yeah, yeah, what's that white milky stuff? Well, that's because I uh, took the car swimming not too long ago and a little bit of water seeped in. So that's why I'm changing the seals, the, the, the diff fluid and all that stuff. And uh, right now is probably the prime time to change the uh, fluid because the axle is out and you can get to the drain bolts really easy. So first of all, let me see if I can show you 
this is the old axle uh, seal. Eh, like, it's okay, but you can see like the, um, it's not as pliable, it doesn't like rebound as much um, anymore. Like it's still all intact. This is probably from me pulling it out, but it doesn't feel as like nice. The new one, this guy right here, you know, it bounces back and it's, you know, it's like young, it's new, it's, it's good, it's still good. Um, now, as far as changing the fluid goes, you've got two bolts, a fill and a drain. This one right here is the drain. The one above is the fill. So this one is the drain. This one is the fill. They are 10 mil uh, Allen uh, sockets, I believe. So uh, what you want to do is make sure you loosen the fill bolt first before you loosen the drain just in case for whatever reason it's seized and you can't get it out or whatever, at least you still have some fluid in there. Um, and uh, if it is really seized and you can't uh, can't loosen it, make sure you do some PB blaster. I'm th I think I'm gonna just do that first just in case. Let it sit for a little bit, maybe like five, 10 minutes, get it uh, penetrated before you try to crack it loose. Because if you strip these guys, um, I don't even wanna imagine how to get these out if you strip, because they're pretty big and if they're already seized in there, it's probably not gonna be fun. Same thing for the drain. So I thought it was a, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Allen, 10 mil Allen, but it was not. It was one of these little star ones. Uh, if you can see that, it is a T55. So um, if it's not a 10 mil Allen for you, try a T55. It's a star shape like this and uh, it should pop it out. So here are the two bolts, the fill and the drain. Now what you'll notice, the fill and the drain, the only difference is the drain has a huge magnet at the bottom just to suck up all the uh, metal shavings if there's any, all the dirt, whatever, it'll stick onto this guy. And this one is the fill. They come with these little washers. Um, I've never had any issues reusing them. Um, but I'm sure you can get them from Toyota for like under a dollar or something right around there um, if you really uh, want to be about that life. Um, but yeah, um, I'll probably reuse both of these guys. Should be okay. So um, for the new seal, it goes in this way. So um, the side with the little lip is facing to the axle. Um, before you put it in, you want to first, of course, make sure that the uh, where the seal sits is nice and clean. So all you got to do is just wipe it down with a paper towel or something like that. And then after that, um, you want to put a little bit of grease, very thin film of grease on this guy. Um, it's more than enough. Um, you can actually use the uh, gear oil or whatever is there. Um, it'll work. Uh, doesn't really matter. This just helps it slide in a little bit um, into the, uh, the diff. guy kind of sits like right there for right now and then what I found um, really uh, really nice is my um, oil filter wrench for whatever reason fits exactly over the seal the oil filter um, the wrench thing I guess fits right over this which is really nice it was a really good coincidence um, and then after that what you want to do is try to push it in a little bit um, it doesn't need a lot of force it just needs a, a little bit so as you can see the bottom side went in but the top didn't um, let me try to push this in and I'll get right back to you guys this is the finished product the uh, you can see the uh, axle seal is uh, pushed back in this is the new one and uh, it sits really flush with the uh, housing so which is right here all the way around you want to make sure all the way around you're the same amount of flushness um, and then you should be okay now before you put the axle in you might want to like put your finger in there get some of the oil lube up the seal itself um, and be careful when you put the axle in that you don't like nick the seal uh, hence 
if you do it's going to leak oil you have to do this all over again but um that's one thing you want to be careful of this thing is heavy To the hub first and then now you can go into the diff now you get it this close um, what you got to do is put the uh, knuckle back up onto the upper control arm and then it'll get it close but you know be careful of the seal that's why you grease it beforehand so this is the old axle it's trying to get into the differential right now and this is the c-clip that i need to clip in so what you want to do, because it's hard to get to, you never want to hammer on these rubber bits. Um, once you hammer it, they'll cut it open, you're going to start it all over again. So what you want to do instead is get a long pry bar, whatever tool you have. See this metal lip right here? This is solid. You go like this, and then tap, tap, tap with a hammer, tap, tap, tap with a hammer, tap, tap, tap with a hammer, and you should be home free. Okay, so once you've got the axle pretty solidly lined up uh, with the differential uh, and how you do that, you just kind of spin it around, make sure it's like, you know, everything is, uh, is lined up pretty well, uh, ready to go in. I put the bolt and nut just to hold the control arm in place so it's kind of where it's supposed to be. And then that's when you can try like uh, pushing the uh, axle back into the hub. And uh, what I'm gonna do is use the uh, pry bar the long pry bar and a hammer and see if we can tap that in. It's on that little metal lip. So I finally got the axle back into the differential. Now, uh, a thing that I did wrong before was I had the hub part all the way in the hub um, and try to push it in through there, and that didn't work. So what I did was after that, I put the uh, lower control arm on the jack, uh, loosened the upper control arm again, and had it dangle a little bit so I can push the axle back out of the hub. You see like how far out of the hub it is right now. You can see like it's a whole finger length. And then with that loose, I had enough uh, to uh, push the uh, axle back into the differential with no problem. Like literally it took like two hammers uh, with uh, the, uh, the longer uh, pry bar and it's uh, in. Now, all I gotta do is push this side in here, which is fairly easy, because all I gotta do is push this guy back up, and we're good. Push the axle back in. You can see it came out on the other side already. So we are pretty close. You can see it doesn't, you can't see the groove for the uh, snap ring yet, but if you pull it from the back, there it is, right there. So when you put the uh, snap ring in, you want to make sure you hold it out there nice and tight or else um, you won't be able to put the snap ring back in. So now we got to put the uh, differential oil back in and um, I got one of these kits from uh, AutoZone or uh, O'Reilly's and uh, basically, you know, you just put it into the uh, bottle of gear oil, pump, 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 and this end you put in the uh, differential and that's how you get the fluid in there because it's a really tight space. The differential oil that I like to use is this guy, 7590, the Mobile One Full Synthetic. Um, I've had good luck with it, no issues, so uh, I keep on using it. So this is the finished product. As you can see, I put the dust cap back over the axle uh, along with the snap ring in there. We have the axle itself in its new home. Very nice, very cozy. Uh, I did fill in the uh, fluid. I don't think you can see the uh, fill plug right there. 
but uh, it took roughly about two quarts. You know, you spill some, there's some left in the bottle, um, but it's all there. It took roughly about two quarts. Um, once it starts coming out of the fill hole, that's when you know you've uh, filled it up correctly. And uh, other than that, all I gotta do is put the wheel back on and we can take it for a test drive. But uh, yeah, now with uh, new seals on both sides, one new CV joint on this side, and uh, fresh fluid, uh, this should last uh, quite a long time. Now after changing all three items, the CV axle, the diff seal, and the diff fluid, you want to make sure there are no leaks and everything was installed correctly. What I did was, after I put everything back on, I left the uh, lower plastic paneling off the vehicle, drove it around for a couple of days. That is, in case there is a leak, you can easily go underneath there and pinpoint where the leak is coming from. Hopefully, this video was of some help to you, and if there's a specific job you'd like to see me tackle, please leave a comment down below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.